Well, welcome. We want to share some... Let me fix someone's mic before I... We want to share a little bit of news on a couple of items today, and so we appreciate you being here. You've probably noticed we've had just a little bit of construction in the uh, core of the city, and, and soon uh, we will have some more renovations underway. So NASCAR Park is scheduled to start renovations on May 21st. It will shut down at that point in time. So the park will be closed to visitors when they begin their transformation from the design of architect Tom um, Bowsley earlier this year. The design is the result of robust community input. And the finished park will add um, to the great quality of life in our downtown corridor serving everyone who lives, works, and plays in the downtown area. Along with the construction of that park, you will see um, that Spaghetti Works start their phase of construction, and that's why we have these uh, wonderful displays up here this morning. So I'm going to turn it over to Nick Esterline, the founder and principal of TGC Development, who we are partnering with. So Nick, why don't you share what you all are doing next to NASCAR Park? Good to have you. Thank you. Well, thank you for having us here today. And I, I think, first of all, I'd like to start by thanking everybody at the city and uh, city council members and WDDC for the support on this project. Uh, when we started the uh, vision of this project about two and a half years ago, uh, we, we knew that this was going to be a very critical piece of downtown development, but we also tried to take a very clear vision and focus that this project was not about us as the developer, uh, but this was a critical site that needed to be the right thing for the city of Wichita and the uh, community. And so, you know, through the input of a lot of different people and the participation in the design and, and feedback that we've gotten, we we're really excited to break ground on this project that we think is truly going to be for everybody in the community. There's uh, such a great opportunity for the uh, living component, but the, also the, uh, the work and the play and the entertainment and having this be the connecting point from all the wonderful things that are happening to the east of this site and also the west and funneling into the excitement of the interest arena and all the great events that get brought in there. We're, we're really excited about being that connecting piece and uh, being a small part of the success of what's going on in downtown Wichita right now. And um, you know, the uh, project is about a $23 million investment, which is a small contribution to the hundreds of millions that we we see currently and that are coming over the next five to ten years. And we're just grateful for the opportunity to be a piece of that and participate in it. So, thank you. It's going to be a great addition to our core of the city, and, and so we're looking forward to this development getting underway. Um, also want to bring up Jeff Fleur of downtown Wichita. He's with Greater Wichita Partnership, and he's going to tell us uh, more about the downtown area. You're never excited about downtown. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Well, thank you, Mayor. And, you know, this project is a great example of a collaborative effort to really further the vision of Project Downtown, which is the master plan of development that was adopted back in 2010. And we appreciate the opportunity to work with TGC, Nick, your team, Mayor, the City Council, uh, the City Manager, and Scott Rigby, who leads the City's economic team to make this possible. You know, it exemplifies Project Downtown in several ways, and that is it really does engage and it will strengthen the surrounding uses of Union Station, Interest Bank Arena, NASCAR Park development, uh, the new Cargill Protein Headquarters, Old Town, the St. Francis Street Corridor, all those assets. It also will strengthen the connectivity, the walkability of Douglas Avenue, literally from Old Town to the river, another huge objective of Project Downtown. As the mayor and Mr. Esselon have noted, uh, there is a tremendous synergy in the development of our downtown. If you go back to 2010, we had about a uh, little bit 1,300 residential units uh, in our downtown core. Today, that exceeds 2,100. Uh, 
So we're seeing that vibrancy in our downtown beyond five o'clock and on the weekends as well. Um, Cargill, uh, as the mayor has noted, an international company that's developing its uh, headquarters for its protein division. Currently, a 200,000 square foot development, 60 plus million dollar investment along Douglas Avenue as well. Meritrust has made the announcement that as Cargill vacates its current headquarters building in downtown, they will be moving into downtown with over 200 employees. King of Freight, which is a relatively new company to our city, is already announced major expansions in our downtown as well. So there's this growing energy, if you will, throughout downtown, and one that's growing too along our riverfront. Think about River Vista and its opening right now. The Advanced Learning Center, EPC Delano Project, and other major infrastructure investments that the mayor is working on with his vision to strengthen us as, a, as a, the next great American city. Um, if you think in a larger context, what's going on with Spirit, Textron, Bombardier, uh, just this week on Monday, there was the whole aviation pathway program and education announced with USD 259, Textron, and WSU Tech. The Innovation Campus, we've had major uh, announcements there with Spirit and also the new YMCA. We're also seeing not only in Wichita, but the region, new opportunities that are growing. So really and truly, what I've talked about today is the tip of the spear. Uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg, if you will, of what really is going on in the activity in our community. In closing, I do want to state that NASCAR Park and Spaghetti Works our projects are very important to continue the transformation that's underway in our city. Uh, they are tremendous projects that will infill a current parking lot and provide a dynamic urban park as well to host a variety of community programming, community events, and increase the distinctiveness of our city. Uh, we are a city under transformation, and the next two to five years are going to be extremely dynamic as we continue to see major projects of this nature move forward. So, Mayor, thank you for the opportunity, sir. So I love it. I think um, looking at these renderings up here, you can tell that it's going to have a big impact. I think even much more so, Nick, than the investment that you guys have shared. I think the impact's going to be greater. The nice thing is we can now say in Wichita, there is no wrong side of the tracks. It's going to be an awesome addition to Wichita. I want to also add that um, some of those features that you currently see in Nashker Park are going to be relocated in some other area parks. We're going to move the gazebo to O.J. Watson Park in June. Some of the trash cans, park benches, picnic tables, and, and other items will also be ro relocated in the park system. So uh, should be um, a nice reuse of some of those materials also. Uh, Troy doesn't throw anything away. We have budgets. So I want to talk also about the National League of Cities. We have some friends in town right now that are providing some training and here to talk about that. We'll bring up Councilmember Brandon Johnson who's been discussing part of this over the last couple of days. It's called Racial Equity and Racial Healing technical assistance initiatives. So Brandon, why don't you come up and share? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, uh, and hello, everyone. Uh, as you know, uh, Wichita is one of six cities selected for this technical assistance opportunity earlier this year. And we are definitely excited about this opportunity that will bring our city uh, not only together, but also help us move further past dialogue into substantive change. Uh, for the last couple of days, the uh, real staff, so again, racial equity and leadership staff from the National League of Cities has been in town uh, working with our executive team as well as touring our great city and today uh, meeting with representatives of the majority of our departments as well as community members uh, to learn more deeply about racial equity, uh, its history, and how we can be intentional in our efforts to address it. I also would like to offer the media an opportunity at 4 o'clock to come over to Atwater uh, Neighborhood Resource Center where we are and talk to some of us and community members about the training and the thoughts that the community has about that. Um, with that, I also want to bring up Mr. Leon Andrews uh, with uh, the National League of Cities to talk more about the uh, technical assistance. So good morning. My name is Leon Andrews. I'm the director for REAL, which stands for Race, Equity, and Leadership. 
Uh, it, it's a national initiative that the National League of Cities created three years ago uh, by our board and CEO, um, just recognizing the important role that an organization like NLC can play to support city leaders that are experiencing uh, tensions or also looking to be more proactive to advance racial equity. Uh, so Wichita is one of six cities, as you heard from the mayor and from the council member uh, Johnson, six cities that were selected to be uh, a part of this national initiative. Uh, the other, other five are Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Long Beach, California, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Rochester, New York, and St. Paul, uh, Minnesota. So a pretty diverse range of cities. The focus of our work is really how do we support uh, as, Mayor, as Mayor Longwell said yesterday, how do we go beyond conversations? Like, How do we go from conversations to action? What does that look like as you're looking at um, opportunities for economic development, as we were hearing earlier today? And so we're excited to be here. This is uh, not my first time in Kansas. Uh, it is my first time in Wichita. And so both the mayor and the council members reminding me that we make sure we are supporting the local tax base. So we will be uh, uh, dining out tonight at a, a number of different restaurants that have been recommended to us and also making sure we get on the Q line, Q -line uh, to make sure we take full advantage of, of that while we're here in town. And we're excited about the training that's going on. As a council member mentioned, there are over 50 uh, community members and, and, and city leaders that are there in the room. And we hope to kind of provide the support over the next 15 months with the commitment that the city is making to, um, to racial equity. So we're glad to be here. Uh, thanks for having us, Mayor and the council member. Brandon Leon, thank you both. Great job. Um, looking forward to having those conversations in our community and more importantly, um, seeing the work that will come out of it because we are going to carry that beyond just conversations. And so that is critically important to us. So at that point in time, we'll open it up to any questions that you might have. Sure. I wondered uh, how many apartments are going to be in the Spaghetti Works and this other building? Nick, um, uh, and Nick why don't you come up here right quick. In the Spaghetti Works building itself, there is 41 apartment, residential apartment units, and the phase that's going on to the parking lot is strictly a commercial phase. Okay. And how many square feet is that? Uh, the commercial phase is approximately 60,000 square feet. Okay, so there won't be any commercial space in the Spaghetti Works building. Correct. Just, just, that'll be all relevant. Correct. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just want yeah. to clarify that. And uh, Mayor Longwell, um, as we all know, Nasker Park has been a place for the homeless to uh, gather for quite some number of years. Uh, what? Uh, where do you think they'll go once the park is closed and the construction begins? So we think that the park will be inviting for all people, regardless of your situation but the, but the reality is we we hope at some point in time we cure homelessness in this community too and so the answer to homelessness isn't just making sure we design a park for the homeless but it's making sure when we design a park it's inviting for everyone in the community no i meant uh in the short term here when when the park is closed and and the construction's underway so we have our, those folks uh, are going to be we have our outreach team that's been working with um a number of different entities and they've been engaged in this process and so they will continue to be engaged and trying to make sure that um, we're, we're finding resources for those that are in need of resources and continuing to reach out to specifically the homeless community so our, so our homeless outreach team is doing just that they're they're reaching out and making sure that we're providing opportunities for those that need them Any other questions? Something, a tough question for Brandon? Uh, Mayor, if you could, uh, I don't know if you can address this today or not, but as we see the Douglas Corridor continue, continuing, you know, populate, I right. guess you could say, and obviously with the apartments that are going in, there's been a lot of talk about, and I hear it a lot, grocery store, I mm -hmm. mean, what is there anything out there that you could tell people now or is that something that you're looking at so so it's nothing at this point that the city's participating in but i can tell you there's been a number of conversations with developers about 
a wide variety of opportunities to bring a grocery store to downtown Wichita. And we've heard from folks that have had opinions on which particular um, vendor they would like to see in downtown Wichita. And so there's a wide range of opinions on who should be the first grocer into Wichita. But uh, we know that when, when they reach, um, that when the numbers reach a certain level, they're, they're going to want to participate in coming to downtown Wichita. And so it's really driven by the increase in, in population, the increase in, in activity as we continue to see people move back to the core of the city. So that those kinds of things, the, the, the market will dictate. Anything else? Hey, Mayor, um, this group that, uh, that went public recently uh, talking about uh, they think there's a need uh, they want to raise a city sales tax to, to fund police and firefighters. Do you have any, any reaction to that? So, so the reality is we're working through our budget right now to try and figure out where we can appropriate the dollars. We've already done an assessment that we paid for in this city to look at what the numbers are in terms of public safety, particularly the assessment addressed um, you know, the police department not only um, from a commission standpoint, but also address some of the needs from a non-commission standpoint of where we need resources. So we're already looking at the budget and how we can move monies over to that. And, and so these folks <clears throat> obviously didn't sit down and talk to us about, is there a lack of funding at this point? Um, we're, we're already looking at moving those resources. So I, I think they, might have been premature and trying to go out to the public and and ask for dollars that we're not sure that one we need for, allocated for this particular use. And personally, I I just don't feel like that's the right way to to generate um, revenue for public safety. If public safety is our top priority, we we'll figure out a way to make sure that we're putting the resources in. I, I really just don't believe that's the right source of revenue. But we haven't had any conversation with any of them. Why not? Um, didn't know about it. They didn't no, reach I, no, I mean, They didn't reach out to us and we didn't know that they were calling a press conference. They, we had no knowledge that they were going to introduce this. So the why not kind of falls on them. They obviously knew that they were doing it. We didn't know they were doing it. So the why not kind of falls on them. Actually, my why not was to uh, why this wouldn't be a good source of funding for police and fire. Well, I, I just don't believe that um, we should separate out. If, if public safety is our top priority, I just don't believe we should separate out different revenue streams of this nature with the caveat that we're going to fund public safety, but if you really, really want extra public safety, you got to pay extra. If public safety is important, we better figure out how to fund it. All right. Thank you all.